So you guys, let me tell you guys a secret. Technically, I gave birth in Canada for free. And I'm going to be talking about how it happened, you know, and so if you want to know how it happened, how I gave birth in Canada for free, keep watching. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be one that I've gotten loads of questions about not on youtube though, but like from like family friends and people around so today's video is going to be on how i give birth in canada for free like you said freezing quote so you know so yes how did i give birth in canada during the peak of covid this was not peak but i had my daughter in july of 2021 so yes so first thing first is getting a visa so like I had sort of resigned that I was going to have my daughter in Nigeria just because I just felt like it's peak of COVID. They're not going to be giving visas just to come and give birth. But then my, my, like my sister-in-law and like, you know, everybody was like, you know, we'll just apply. All you lose is hundred dollars for the application. If you get denied, which, you know, if you look at the grand scheme of things, you're like a hundred dollars is not too bad. You know, I can, I can sacrifice that. Which we decided to apply. So back then, if you like during the peak of COVID, if you had family here, like nuclear family, right? Like if you had like siblings or your spouse is here, you could apply for a visiting visa on the basis of statutory relationships, something like that. So yeah, so we all just sort of like lumped Odion, Odie's application and mine together with his sister's document. We just we didn't even include my sister's own. We just did with his own sibling's own and submitted. You guys, tell me why they approved Odie's own and then they denied me, right? And it was just like, really? Like, at this point, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna give it to Nigeria. I already told my doctor, oh, I want an epidural. You know, this is what I want. Yada 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 yada. But then I was like, you know, let me just send them my sister's documents as well because my sister is a PR here. And I did. And I got approved. So let me just add this here. This visiting visa was applied when I was applied for while we still had a permanent resident application running. So if you watched my How to Relocate to Canada video, you will you know that I mentioned that our application took three years. From 2019 till 2022 and i had my baby in 2021 so yes let me just put that out there in case you didn't watch if you didn't watch it what are you waiting for go and watch it it's up here the link is here you guys yeah so i applied for the visa and i got it it's like you know at the last minute because i left nigeria when i was 37 weeks like Truth be told, I could have given birth on the on the flight. And I was traveling alone. So, like, that was not wise. That was not smart. But in the end, my baby came late. So, I ended up getting to 41 weeks. So, it worked out well. Right? The first hurdle is past getting the visa. The second hurdle, finding a doctor. Even those in Canada here, myself, even as we've, we've been here for almost a year, we still don't have a family doctor. So getting a doctor was a bit of a challenge because before I, I, I was like, you know, my options are like a midwife or OBGYN, OBGYN, let me just say that. And I had reached out to like, so there's like a website, I'll leave the link below where you can find like all the Ottawa, like midwives and doctors and hospitals, like you can give birth in. So I had reached out to every single midwife on that list I had sent mail, I had called, I had filled all their forms, and I kept getting denied. Like, I kept getting denied. Because it's like, oh, like, our patient list is full, we can't take in anyone else. And also because, like, I was right at the end of pregnancy, after, of the pregnancy. So it's like, I could have given birth at any minute, and they just probably did not want to take that gamble because they didn't have my history. You guys, I did not give up. I kept reaching out to a lot of clinics, I'm like, oh, clinics is not the same way clean clinic is in Nigeria. So, like, how bad can it be? I just told myself, if I don't get anything, worst case, I would, I would walk into the hospital as an emergency case. And they cannot hold me back, you know? So, eventually found a clinic which I used. I will leave their name in the 
description part below. They were super, super helpful. They referred me for all my lab tests, like all the labs I had to get done. That was where I found a doctor who ended up not being the doctor that delivered me, you know. And the rest is history, given birth. The process here is very straightforward. Unlike Nigeria, where you have to, like, you go with, like, luggage, like, you're traveling with, you're carrying your house, where they will even tell you to bring cotton wool, bring olive oil, bring Vaseline, bring... If you're Nigerian, you know all the ridiculous things they ask you to bring, even with how much you're paying in the hospital. All right? So, when I was, like... I'll insert some clips because I have some clips of when I was in labor. I went to the hospital the first time, like when I felt like, oh, you know, like this pain. I had contractions like every minute, like every other minute. It was bad. It's like one minute I'm like scrolling through my phone. The next I'm like, oh, I'm boiling. I went to the hospital like, oh, you're only at 1.5. I had been in labor from 10 o'clock. This was... This was like four. Like, oh, you're only 1.5. Is this your first baby? Yeah. So they probably thought I was exaggerating the pain. It's like, go back home and come back. And it was like, oh, you know what? They gave me something for the pain. I went home. I was able to sleep a bit. Eight, nine. I was super uncomfortable. I was, I was crying. Like I was in so much pain. But then I went back to the hospital. I had my baby, and I was for you guys all the delivery. Just because he's not in labor and delivery still. He's just giving birth in Canada story. So yes, I had my baby. I ended up staying three nights. And I'm going to tell you what the cost would have been. I'm going to tell you how much I ended up paying. You know. So the cost per night was about two five for me, the adult. And about two K or like a thousand five for my baby. And I stayed technically, even though I got into the hospital at like 11.30, 11.10, like past 11, I was still billed for the 40, 45 minutes I stayed in the hospital for that night. So staying in the hospital from like 11.10 to like 12, I was billed for that night. So I ended up technically staying three days charge. And then you're, you're billed for your baby as well. And then you're billed like if you got an epidural, if you had like a surgeon stitch you up, if you had a tear, um, if your baby, you know, like you're built for whatever thing, like it's an add-on. So that's something to take into consideration. Like if you're coming to give birth here and you're paying out of pocket without OHIP. You know, OHIP is Ontario Health Insurance and I didn't have OHIP because I was on a visitor visa. So something to After having the baby, like the nurse would come and give you all the documentation you need. And they'll tell like the doctor has the process of applying for the baby's birth certificate. So which I just, it was super fast. I just did it right there in the hospital online. I applied for a birth certificate and it was shipped out. It was mailed to me in like, I think two to three weeks, two weeks ish, thereabout. And then I applied for her passport because I'm like, ah, I came to this country to give birth. I'm not going to leave without my blue passport for my daughter anyway. I Me, mean, I'll stay with my green passport. People were like, oh, let's collect her Nigerian passport and her Canadian passport here. Nigerian passport so that we could travel without having to get a visa, right? You know, without, like, because if she was going with her Canadian passport, she would need a visa. But with her Nigerian passport, we didn't have to worry about that. So we wanted to make, we did her Nigerian passport here and also applied for her Canadian passport. So the Canadian passport process was pretty seamless. All you just have to do was fill the form, you and your partner would sign, and then you go into the office and give it to them. And you let them know, oh, I'm traveling on XYZ date, and the passport will be ready before the day you're traveling. If your partner is in Nigeria or back in your home country, the documentation would have to be, like the passport office will scan the documentation to the high, Canadian High Commission in your country, where your partner would have to go there and sign the form before the passport can be processed. So yeah, so this is like the, you know, the main points and all those things. So let me talk visa application. Honestly, I can't explain to that I know how to apply for a bird tourism visa because I came on a visiting visa and all I had to do was show, I just told them when I was coming and when I was leaving, um, what I was coming to do. I was coming to visit my family, you know, um, 
what else like that was literally all they asked me like for bank statement we just submitted proof of funds at the border though the lady did ask me how much was i coming in with because she said i was pregnant she was like oh if you give birth here like this amount you mentioned it's not going to be enough i was like oh yeah like i have my debit card so i don't need cash you know like i can like even if the cash i had is not enough my debit card will cover the balance so now how did i give it in canada for free you guys like honestly i'm not going to lie to you and tell you oh i did this i did this i did that no it just happened that Ontario government was doing the was doing the Lord's will at that time because we had you know you had the baby you're like oh my god I'm so relieved time to go and find out how much are we paying and my sister and I went to the finance department just to even get like an idea so we can you know you can start tightening your belts so I can start saying okay oh, this McDonald's I will not buy it because I have to pay the hospital this amount of money. <laughs> I think when my sister long went, they had given her like an estimate. An estimate of, oh, this is how much it would be. You know, which to be honest was like double digits. Not fun. So it was like, oh, we had made up our mind that, oh, you know what, well, okay, let's see how we can talk to them to see if we can get like a payment, payment plan to start paying things, you know, monthly. At least be paying something monthly, let the amount be reducing. But then it's like, oh, we call to say, oh, like a month has passed. We've not seen the bill. Like, hello, hi, what's the bill? You know, like, what's the bill? And they're like, oh, the government is going to take care of the bill. Wait, you, like, you mean to tell me that the government is going to pay for the bill? They're like, oh, yeah, the government has taken care of everything. You don't have to worry about it. So yes, that was it. So all I had, all I paid for was like all the labs I had to do. And then I paid for one of the doctor's fee. But like delivery costs, hospital costs, anesthetics. Oh, I didn't have to pay for that. Whereas I have a friend who also gave birth in Calgary and her hospital required a 5k down payment first before like before even starting the process of delivery. I gave birth in Ottawa General Hospital. No, Ottawa Hospital Civic Campus. No, not General, Ottawa Hospital Civic Campus. That's where I gave birth and yes, if there was anything I missed, cause I'm trying to rush cause my battery is dying. And if, you, if there's anything I missed, you have any questions, my email is down below, leave a comment and I'll definitely address them. Thanks for watching. Bye.